This is the Sobel SV07, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's actually pretty freaking great. And what's more, I think it is the canary in the coal mine, signaling that the budget 3D printer market, not just the high-end market, is about to change for good. And in this video, I want to explain why. So whether or not you're in the market for a new budget 3D printer, stick around to the end because I think you'll find my conclusions to be a pretty interesting insight into where the market is going. Let's dive in. A few months ago, I took a Sobel SV06, strapped a Creality Sonic pad onto it, and began churning out high quality 24 minute benchies for around $400. You guys love that video, but what I didn't realize at the time was that Sobel themselves were about to upstage me by going ahead and doing it themselves. Sobel has been going from strength to strength recently with their wildly popular, super high quality SV06 and then almost immediately thereafter, their SV06 Plus, both of which, while they aren't perfect, are giving companies like Creality a serious run for their money at the budget price range. Which brings us to the SV07. A few weeks ago, Sovol began teasing their latest model, a high-speed entry-level printer which boasts Clipper, a high flow hot end, an auxiliary cooling fan, and a touch screen all out of the box. Yes, it's still a bed slinger, and yes, there are still V roller wheels. Yes, it's still a bed slinger, and yes, there are still V roller wheels, but in all of my testing so far, that honestly doesn't seem to matter. This thing is still really, really good. Now, I do want to be clear here, this video is sponsored by Sovol, and there are affiliate links in the description below, so I do have a conflict of interest. But don't completely write off everything that I'm going to say here just yet. You see, I originally planned to do another video today entirely, a project video showcasing some of the upcoming projects that I've been doing on the SV07, and that's actually the video that Sovol agreed to sponsor. But Unfortunately, my filament sponsor wasn't able to get the filament here for that project in time, and to be completely honest, I've been so impressed by my initial testing of the SV07 that I decided to just do a full video all about that and what I think it means for the budget end of the market as a whole. With that said, even though I cannot ethically call this a product review because money is changing hands, Sobel is not going to see this video before you guys. They've had no inputs here and have no way of seeing this video before you all. And I have absolutely no problem, as you're going to see in a second, listing out both the bad and the good about this printer, because frankly, a couple hundred bucks or whatever is not going to be worth jeopardizing your guys' trust or my reputation. So with all of that out of the way, let's then talk about the good with this printer. Needless to say, as you can expect with any of these flat packed printers, setup was a breeze on the SV07. I had the printer fully set up in exactly 15 minutes, and that included about one or two minutes of trying to find my tools in this mess of a new studio and all the moving boxes. Now I knew the hardware would be easy, but based on my experience tweaking the SV06 that I clipperized, I did expect to have a reasonably uphill battle getting the SV07 to print perfectly. My rep sent me some Cura profiles, but as you're going to see in an upcoming video, make sure you're subscribed for that. I've recently switched over to Orca Slicer for 100% of my printing needs. Fortunately, Orca Slicer 1.6.2 just added the ability to add any Marlin or Clipper printer, and even gives you a baseline profile for the printer to get started with. So all I needed to do was configure the print volume, set my print start and print end macros in Clipper, crank up the speeds a little bit to approximately what I was doing on the SV06, and I was actually good to go on the slicer side. Then I just went through the manual and the simple on-screen instructions to level the bed, do a bed mesh, and configure input shaping with this lovely included accelerometer. Super easy. From there, I couldn't believe what happened next. I was actually so shocked that I recorded a YouTube short of it. It just worked. Look guys, 
I've tested a fair number of printers at this point, from the very, very best to some bargain options. But almost never have I had a perfect first layer on my first print right out of the box. I'll be completely honest and say that I do suspect that Sobel may have done some extra testing on my review unit because there was some leftover red filament in the hot end from the factory, but I don't know if that's actually just part of the normal QC process that they do for every printer or not. So let me know in the comments below, those of you who do get your hands on an SV07, if your hot end had filament in it too. Anyways, from there, my first print came out perfectly. And then my second one. And then the third one. In fact, the only failed prints that I've had to date were when I constrained the filament path by moving the filament sensor. More on that in a second. But other than that, everything just works. In fact, I quickly began to trust this printer so much that I actually left it for the entire weekend, which is a level of trust that very few printers ever earn around here. And I'll also be even more honest and say that while I love, love, love my Voron 2.4, while the SV07 was cranking out successful print after successful print, my Voron got bogged down in an endless loop of trying to tweak material settings and failed prints and profile tweaks. And this made for a really, really stark contrast between two very different clipper experiences. On the one hand, a so-called cheap bed slinger that just worked, whereas on the other hand, a top of the line, all out custom core XY monster that I couldn't get to print properly to save my life simply because my profiles and my material settings were not perfectly dialed in for this specific project. I'm sure that moving the Voron into the new office on a wagon probably didn't help it either. Needless to say, I'm impressed. The SV07 prints fast, like MK4 fast, ranging from 200 to 250 millimeters a second without a hitch. The hot end flows really beautifully even on slow materials like PETG. Hooking up a camera was a breeze. I was able to connect to SSH with no problem using the default credentials, which by the way, in case you're wondering, they're MKS and MakerBase. Bed adhesion is awesome. Build quality, even better. The auxiliary cooling fan behind the gantry is just a really smart way to add cooling without adding any weight, except for on the Z axis. It's incredibly quiet, like quieter than what I've seen from the Mark IV. Sobel even went ahead and implemented the feedback of a lot of different content creators and put on this massively bulky strain relief on the bed. So what then? Is this a perfect printer? Well, no. In fact, there's probably no such thing. So let's now talk about the bad. Yes, although this video is sponsored, Sobel has given me complete liberty to share the honest truth, and there are a few things about this printer that I really don't like. First, there's the touchscreen and the overall responsiveness of it. Now, I found that there is a good two to three second delay sometimes when doing specific things like canceling the print, confirming selections, and so on. Now, for most things like the menus, it's really quite responsive, but I'm not sure why there is this annoying delay when trying to perform certain actions, and I can only assume that it has something to do with the processing power of the chip they're using here and how much is required for those actions. Second, and maybe this is just me, but it's the dangly little filament sensor which I've moved. I know that they put it up here to reduce the mass on the print head that's gonna be moving fast, but personally, I always like to remove the included filament spool roller and mount my filament elsewhere like a dry box or on my racks. And there's no good way for me to relocate this filament sensor without either straining the filament path or printing some kind of new attachment that I haven't gotten around to. Third, I did have some difficulties installing custom modules and packages on Clipper like Obico or Octo Everywhere due to the fact that an invalid date was on the chip from the factory. This cost me about 30 minutes or so of Googling around and it finally yielded the answer and I'm just going to post it up on screen right here in case any of you run into the same issue. Fourth, let's talk about the elephant in the room the V-Roller wheels. Some of you may recall that the SV06 and the SV06 Plus, like the Prusa Mark III that they're modeled after, utilize linear rods and bearings for stiffness and security. This printer does not, and I don't have a good reason as to why. 
One reason may be cost savings. I mean, Sovel probably wanted this printer to remain at the sub $400 price range so that it doesn't have to compete with the onslaught of budget Core XY printers on the way, like the Creality K1, and with mounting variable costs from the powerful processor to this otherwise beautiful touchscreen, and also the molding costs for all new assemblies, they had to cut costs somewhere. Another possible reason is because, unlike the SVO6, they knew that this printer was going to have input shaping from day one, and so there's really no reason for more rigidity. I mean, you can just compensate for it with software. Sure, you could go faster with a more rigid system, but when I compare this printer to the clipperized SVO6 I did, the recommended acceleration values are actually pretty much the same, which really makes me wonder. I mean, does it even matter? Yeah, V-rollers get a bad rap and you might need to replace them sooner than linear bearings, but at the end of the day, in this application, they get the job done for much less than linear bearings. Fifth, and I think this is probably going to apply to just any clipper printer, there is a learning curve here. And as I mentioned, this thing pretty much just worked on the software side, but only after I had properly configured the print start and print end macros in my slicer based on my experience with Clipper from my Voron build. It wasn't done for me. Now sure, I could have just used the Cura profiles, and yes, I will of course be sharing my modified printer.cfg and macros with my Patreon supporters, but out of the box, with an alternative slicer, this printer didn't even have the ability to move the print head or disable the heaters after it was done printing. I had to configure all of that myself, just as I would have with any other clipper printer like a Voron. And for beginners, that can be a little daunting. And finally, I'll just point it out. Yes, it's a bed slinger and bed slingers are no longer in fashion. But as I discussed at length in my podcast episode with Denise Bertacci of Tom's Hardware, for now, I think that bed slingers, because of the ability to flat pack them and ship them cheaply, aren't going anywhere for the entry level segment of the market, or in the case of the Prusa Mark IV, even the high end segment of the market. And as far as bed slingers go, well, I honestly think this is probably about as good as it can get. Pretty soon, I should be getting my hands on an Anchor Make M5, and we'll see if my opinion of that changes. So what does this mean for the 3D printing market? Well, to be honest, and here's maybe where my bias towards Sovol as a sponsor might come into play. I think that this printer is going to be a game changer for the 3D printing market, just like the SV06 has shaken things up in a market niche that was pretty much dominated by Creality and their clones. You see, up until now, all of the budget options in the SV07's price range have either run Marlin, or in the case of the BQ Hurricane, haven't really been all that good. But here, for what I think is probably the first time, we have a budget 3D printer, perfect for beginners, which runs an unmodified, unlocked, open source version of Clipper out of the box. This means that an entire new generation of 3D printing enthusiasts, beginner and advanced alike, will be able to get their hands on a clipper machine, learn the ropes, tweak and customize it as they learn in a way that something like the Creality Sonic Pad simply doesn't allow. Now, I foresee that in the same way that the beginner 3D printers have learned about their printer's hardware by printing and tweaking different parts and modifications on their Ender style printers, this new generation of completely open clipper printers is going to herald a move towards users, all users, becoming more savvy with the increasingly popular Clipper without having to spend Voron level time or money or dealing with scary reflashing of firmware to do it. Yes, there is a learning curve and yes, you'll need to learn about things like macros and input shaping and all of that stuff. But I think this printer and the ones that will no doubt come out after it are going to herald a larger move towards Clipper at the entry level of the market as well. But should you get one? With all that said, should you get one of these printers? Well, as with all my recommendations, it really does depend. And again, if I haven't already made it abundantly clear, this is a sponsored video. With that said, I think my friends over at Sovol would actually agree with me that while there might be better printers at other price points, the SV07 is the perfect printer for a few specific types of people. The first is beginners. I've long recommended the SV06 and SV06 Plus as my number one choice for beginners for various reasons. Because bed slingers as a format are used by so many printers, they're a great way to learn the ropes and there's a lot of information out there. They're open source, which means that you can print your own replacement parts when you mess up. 
They are physically open as well, making them easy to repair and they're not expensive, meaning that it's a good way to tip your toes into the hobby and see how you like it without investing too much money. In fact, despite having connections with a lot of different 3D printer companies, when my video editor and friend Eric decided that he wanted to get into 3D printing, I actually got him a Sobel SV06 Plus to start with, and he's been loving it. The second group that I can really recommend this printer for is the budget conscious consumer. Look, sponsored video or not, I'm not going to lie. If you're happy to spend $1,100 on a 3D printer, then yeah, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is still the best printer I've ever used. But this machine isn't trying to compete with that. Frankly, considering the Sobel SV07 is now $339 for the next 500 or so customers, you can literally get three of these for the price of one carbon, or two for the price of the P1P, which I haven't personally tested and therefore can't really comment on. Now, as far as performance goes, it's probably around 80% of the way there. Again, for 33% as much money. That makes this, without a doubt, the best budget 3D printer I've seen on the market today, and I would happily recommend it even if I didn't have a financial incentive to do so. In fact, when my friends ask me which printer they should buy for their kids to get into 3D printing, I'm going to be recommending this one from now on. But hey, let me know in the comments below. Do you see yourself picking up one of these printers? Did I do a good job navigating that fine line between paid shill and sharing my honest opinions, or did I cross a line here giving my opinions in a sponsored video? I'd love your feedback. I'm definitely still figuring out how to strike that balance. So let me know in the comments below, respectfully. Thanks to Sovol once again for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you for watching and for considering using the affiliate links in the description for whatever printer or filament that you choose to buy, because that really does help keep the channel afloat. And of course, thanks to my Patreon supporters who have helped me turn all of this into a full-time job with a studio build coming soon. I really appreciate you guys. That's all for now, but I'll see all of you on the next layer.